nine eight, right? Good morning and welcome to worship at Johnson River of Life, Hopkins Grove, Humboldt. And this is actually August 2nd, although we're recording this a week and a half earlier because we're on vacation. However, this is, I believe, streaming live and we're premiering. So we hope that you uh, have a wonderful worship service. We're excited to be worshiping with you this morning and uh, we'll be excited to be back in person next week. I think we're going to share our announcements in just a little bit. We're going to start with our call to worship. I, I do want to say make sure, even though we're not here, you can be posting in the Facebook comments, joys, prayer concerns, interacting with each other. Continue to be doing that. Um, share life with one another via social media. Let us share our call to worship together. Sometimes life takes us where we don't expect. Sometimes God, God takes us where, where we, we don't, don't expect. In worship, we gather to get in touch with God's bigger narrative. In, in worship, we gather to expand our hearts. So let us worship the God of unending surprises. Let, let us worship the God of, of love. love. We invite you to light your candles to join in worship together with us now as we sing together. We're going to open with singing, God will take care of you. God will take care of us no matter what the test, no matter what we're going through. And right now, with everything we're going through, it is a good reminder to know that God is with us through all of it.
Amen. Amen. Announcements. I think we've got some good announcements, don't we? I can't announce this week's stuff, so I have to be announcing the next week's stuff. We do have we do have a Johnston team meeting coming up. I believe it's Thursday, August 5th. And at this point, it could be Zoom, but be paying attention because we could do something else with that. And Hopkins Grove has their meeting the following Thursday after that, so be paying attention to that as well. Also be paying attention because this coming week, um, Johnston will be meeting at a park, and it is West, I can't think of the name of it right now. I don't think it's written there, but it'll be coming out in the emails. So we'll be bouncing around parks going forward um, next week, August 9th. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Wednesday night is still on. Wednesday night, that's right. Continue to join us for the Acts Bible study. We're having a lot of good conversation um, starting at 7 o'clock. We would love to see anybody and everybody at those. I think that's it for announcements. I'm going to have Jody come over and share the children's time. All right. Good morning, everyone. And I'm going to talk today about, I'll move this first. I'm going to talk today about change. Fun word, change. Um, things change. Things happen. Um, sometimes we feel good about that change, and sometimes we don't feel so good. But why don't we like change? Change is something, we don't like change because something different. And we don't like to have something different. We want to be, keep our same routines and keep everything the same so that it's comfortable and we feel good about it. And it's just, it's comfortable. We like it. Um, but sometimes we have to get uncomfortable when we have to go to a new place or s meet new people or go try something new, and that makes us uncomfortable sometimes. But you know what? Change is okay. Change is actually good. Um, I bet most of you, not all of you, I know there's just a couple of you, but I bet most of you are not still wearing diapers. That would be, oh, no, not still wearing diapers. That's kind of silly, isn't it? But that's change for you, and I bet after you have service today and you go eat lunch that most of you are not going to go have your lunch out of a bottle because you've changed and you've grown up and that's a good change these are all good things and what about i know lots of you are start r started riding your bike this year and maybe you started out with um, training wheels but now you've changed that and you're going without the training wheels and all that's kind of scary stuff because it's something new and different and we're trying things and it makes us uncomfortable and that's kind of scary but you know what god wants us to be in those uncomfortable times because in those uncomfortable times is when we really need to call on call on him and rely on him and th god wants us in those spots so that we are fully trusting in god and relying on him and going to him when we need it so when change comes change is going to always come it's a good thing and it's all right we just have to remember to call on god and ask for his help all right let's all pray Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the changes in our life. Um, we know it's not always easy, and we don't always take them very well, but we just ask that you be patient with us and help us to remember to always come to you because you are always there with us. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jody. At this time, we're, gonna sh we're going to uh, go to our offering time. And so I just remind you, if you haven't signed up for online uh, giving, you can do that. Um, the information is over my head or in one of these directions. Um, you can text give or you can send a check in to continue to support uh, the ministry and community um, stuff that's going on at Johnston and Hopkins Grove and Humboldt. Um, also, we're going to share our we're going to share our prayers. We're going to lift those up. Obviously, I'm not live with you, so I'm not going to be able to read those prayers that you're putting in Facebook, but I will be praying over those um, after I see them posted. At this time, I'm actually going to uh, lead us in prayer, and I invite you to pray with me. Holy and mighty God, we do give you glory and praise. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. And Lord, 
Specifically, we ask that you would be with us wherever we are in the midst of this, uh, this summer, this year, 2020, with all of the change that we're experiencing, with all of the, the wild uh, changes around us. Lord, we pray that your presence would surround us with your mercy, with your grace, and with your peace. We pray that you would um, be with us and uplift us in all things. Holy and mighty God, we, we pray that you would um, be at work in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and in our churches. Holy and mighty God, as we continue now, we lift up to you our concerns for our families, our friends, for those who have been in the hospital or have procedures. Lord, for um, the military, for the police and fire department, those who have been on the front line, have been in difficult positions. Lord, we pray for your protection and for your safety. For those in leadership of our nation and the world, we pray that you would, um, that you would give them wisdom and discernment. Help them to um, give guidance and wisdom to move us forward. Holy and mighty God, we surrender all these things and the things unspoken, heavy upon our hearts, and we trust them to you. Holy God, we come now and we pray together the prayer which you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Jeremiah 29, 1 through 7. And, you know, it's always fun doing these services that aren't live and there's voices going on behind me trying to figure things out. Did you figure out which one to plug in for the guitar amp? Okay, good. Whew. No, okay. Well, then it might not be the right one. We'll just run with it and test it once we're done doing the recording. See, this is the fun thing. I've watched other church services and the bloopers after the fact because they're editing everything, and I get to laugh at their bloopers, but you get to laugh at our live because we don't pull out those bloopers. And, they, and boy, I do wish you could see people crawling across the floor at times. Yes, then you would truly laugh. So from Jeremiah 29, 1 through 7. These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exile and to the priests and the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was King Jeconiah, I have to think about that one, and the queen mother, the eunuchs, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the metal workers had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisa, the son of Saphan, and Gamaria, the son of Hilkah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all of the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build your houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That's one of those Bible passages that some people wish that I had asked them to read. Not really. Change is hard. Uh, and I think Sometimes the older you get, the harder change is. Um, when you run into change, you just find yourself saying, I, I, didn't, I don't want to change. I like things the way they are. 
before we moved here, um, my kids attended a school, um, Dysert Geneseo School District, and it was, it was uh, there that my kids went before we moved here to Johnston. Now, Geneseo was the township that we lived in. Dysert was the closest town with a school. And many of you may have experienced this. In 1967, this was before my kids' time and before my time, but the school that was one mile south of where we lived it closed, and it became a consolidated school where Dysert and Geneseo were consolidated. The kids were bused to Dysert, and they were able to continue schooling that way with, with larger classes, teachers, more resources going to one school rather than divided in different places. I, I'd really love to, if we were live, to ask each of you, how many of you either went through a consolidation of a school or w attended a consolidated school. Because out in rural Iowa, there are many school districts that have been consolidated over time. We ourselves were not affected by this transition or change. Um, but even being there years, decades later, a mile from where that old school sat, there was still a sense of loss, a sense of pain. The building still sits there today, abandoned, broken, kind of like an empty shell, a skeleton of the past. The truth is, when people feel uprooted, when they feel like something of their identity has, has been torn from them, there's something about it that just remains a, a husk, a painful reminder. Some people have gone through job changes where jobs have forced them to move and children go through uh, being uprooted and their friends that they have to move away from and they have to move to a new school district and create new friends and there's always a sense of fear or pain or loss or uncertainty that comes with that. Our school systems in Iowa uh, through consolidation and so many other things they've had an adaptive history as the needs uh, have changed in communities, the sizes, the, the, the students, the resources, the teachers. We found ways to adapt, to support, to care for, and to give the best education possible. You know, consolidation was not easy from the stories that I've heard, but it was good. It often leaves skeletons, and yet it also reveals treasure. Such is the truth with change. Change that is forced upon us, it, it's still, even though it's difficult, it often reveals a hidden treasure that we never knew was there. For Babylon and Israel, many people being forced into exile, forced to move, up, being uprooted, to live in a new community, every element of life changed. They were seen as an outsider, often treated as slave labor. They weren't trusted, and they didn't trust their neighbor. The temple that they used to worship in was gone. A different religious system, a different educational system, different rulers and policies, and most of them moved there with very little, bar basically what they could carry on their back. I can imagine in their situation, Maybe like a child being uprooted and moving, moved to, to a new school district and, and everything changing. I can imagine after six months, they're just hoping that they can go back. They're hoping they can go home, back to normal, back to the way that it was, not willing to admit that their normal was not even possible anymore. This letter from the prophet Jeremiah in Jerusalem, he writes to them, he says, to the surviving elders, to the leaders of Israel. And then he speaks on behalf of God. He says, I, or God, I have sent you. I've sent you into exile. This is like God saying, by the way, you being here, you being in this new place, this change that you've experienced, this was not a mistake. God's saying, build homes. Plant gardens and, and then stay long enough to eat the harvest. Find spouses and marry and, and have children. And, and then have them find spouses and marry and have children. He's talking about generations of staying in a place, putting down roots. God's basically saying, accept 
this change, this change of environment, this change of reality, as if this change comes from me. I can imagine the elders, the, the people of Israel, reading this letter, and, and I can imagine them thinking to themselves, wait a minute, God, wait a minute. You mean this exile, this suffering, losing everything, leaving it behind, the destruction that we experienced? This, this was not a mistake? I can imagine some of us today saying, God, what? wait just a minute, God, uh, COVID-19? Racial injustice and, and protests and virtual work and classrooms and all of this change, this wasn't a mistake. Maybe instead we should ask, does God cause calamity or does God exist and support us in and through the midst of disaster? destruction, calamity. Maybe I, I would ask, if God were to write us a letter today, would God be telling us to plant roots in, in the circumstances that are stirring in our own society? Would God tell us to be rooted where we are? Maybe we should ask, what is God doing in this time and in this space? Why can't we just go back to the way things were? Truth is, I've heard a lot of people a ask that question or maybe say, when? Maybe you've been one of them. Maybe you have had friends say, I just can't wait for things to get back to normal. When can things just go back to the way they were? But maybe we should also be reminded that our normal was just a moment in time. Think about normal just a few years ago or normal 50 years ago or normal 200 years ago. For some people, normal 200 years ago would not be a place that they want to go back to. Or normal several hundred years ago, a uh, thousand years ago, back to Jesus' time. In the midst of whatever moment in history, normal has only been a window, a moment. And according to this passage, God is present in the midst of every moment. So what if God were to send us a letter today? What if God were to say to you, what you're experiencing is not a mistake? Your situation at home or at work, your situation uh, with, with health or all of these things that surround you, your community, and exactly what our society is going through. It's not a mistake. Instead, plant, how, I mean, plant gardens, build houses, find spouses, invest in your situation, in your community. Accept this reality as if it comes from God. Maybe the real question we should ask ourselves is, does God intend for us to adapt to these swirling changes? Is God inviting us to make this our new home, our new reality? And if that's the case, if we are to truly plant ourselves in this reality and to follow the great commandment to love God and love our neighbor as ourself, how would we do that best? How would we love our neighbor and our community the best possible way in the midst of COVID, in the midst of justice issues, in the midst of societal transition and change? How do we root ourselves in everything that is going on as the very presence of Christ for one another? Instead of hoping that everything changes, everything goes back to the way it was, maybe we can hope for a future. Maybe we can invest in that future with God and with one another. And that's what God is telling the Israelites here to do. Put down roots and invest in the betterment of your community. 
right now the way that it is? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for your family? I invite you to pray with me. Holy and almighty God, we give you thanks for this word. We give you thanks for promising that you are always with us in the midst of difficulty and challenge, reminding us that, that you have not abandoned us or forsake us. Holy God, you stand with us. And in fact, you invite us to put down roots and to be your very presence, your blessing to others. Lord, help us to think about how we can do that to the best of our ability today and going forward. And we pray this in your name. Amen. We're going to continue with a little bit of worship. And I'm not sure if we can hear my guitar yet or not. No? We haven't heard it yet. We haven't found out yet. Oh, I want to turn that way. Tying a knot. Yep. Ready, Pogue? There we go. Can you hear it now? I really want to say, can you hear me now? Here we go. the one who walked on water and you calmed the raging seas you commanded highest mountains to fall upon their knees you're the one who welcomed sinners and you opened blinded eyes you restored the broken hearted and you brought the dead to life forgetting all of sin, you remember all your promises. You are amazing, all that amazing, forever.
Amen. God is more than enough, even when we, even when life feels like it's falling apart and change is just uprooting us in every way that we imagine. God is with us, and God is more than enough to get us through, to carry us, even when, even when we can't imagine a future. It's a good reminder that we have a hope that is eternal, a hope that takes us beyond this world, a hope that is greater than anything we can see or know, a hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. good news is that we have a home with Christ, a home that gives us assurance and hope, a home of love and of grace and mercy. Oh, we're going to close by s- reading our benediction together, and <coughs> I hope I still have a copy of that right there. Let us read our benediction together, which should be on the screen above my head. I think so. May God God bless bless you with with discomfort at easy easy answers, answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deeply within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, 
so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Let us close with our benediction. Oh, that's the one I need. Somehow, my page number got missed. May the Lord, you can hit, there we go. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. blessing of Christ rest upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I look forward to seeing you next week out at a park in worship. Amen.